Today we are going to talk about first thousand days and nutrition. First thousand days. Uh, what is first thousand days? I'm sure we all know it, but just uh, you know, I'm going to reiterate to, uh, why it is important. And uh, when we think of first thousand days, uh, forget about other children. Let's talk about us, right? Uh, a lot of us are women, uh, men, and you know. Uh, some of you are very young and probably thinking of future of having children and, you know, thinking about their growth and their, uh, you know, their uh, career. So when we think of that, uh, we, we always think of short term goal and long term goal. So what is a short and long term goal uh, for children, uh, you know, not only children, but for ourselves? So, I mean, obviously in short term, we want our children to be healthy. We want them to be uh, doing well in school and, you know, uh, succeed, of course. And in long term, we want them not to have any diseases, you know, to have good immunity, no blood pressure, no diabetes. And of course, you know, we all want healthy aging for all of us, right? That's our uh, long and short term goal uh, by and large, right? So basically our... I mean, but health comes first, right? Health is wealth. As you know, uh, you know, we all are stuck at home because our our health is at stake. So if, if we don't have good health, you know, nothing else matters really. So uh, literally our, our goal is to have lifelong health, right? Why first thousand days critical? We need to kind of understand why is it critical? Why Why those thousand days, you know? So first thousand days is basically conception to second birthday of a child. And it offers the opportunity to build healthier and more prosperous future. As good nutrition during this phase gives building block for brain and physical development. Okay, so what is happening during this thousand days is baby's brain has been developed. Okay, not only baby's brain has been developed, but basically there is a full physical growth. Can you imagine from literally from uh, you know, small little uh, ovum from uh, from sperm and that uh, ovum you're having, you know, and, and birth weight is about three kg. And by the time child is about two to two years of age, you're almost 12, 12 kg, 12 and a half kg, right? So you have tremendous growth in this uh, first thousand days. And not only physical growth, but the brain. I mean, brain is the most important part of our body, right? So it's very important that we take care of this uh, thousand days. Okay, if you have, if you want a brainy child, and if you want a really healthy, robust child, and uh, if you look at the growth, uh, brain grows to about eighty percent of adult size. Okay, by age three, and it reaches ninety percent by age five. So by the time child goes to school, say around four and a half, five years of age, ninety percent of brain development has already taken place. So you can imagine that mother needs to know so much, right? Uh, not only, you know, when she's pregnant, but even before she is pregnant, she needs to know what I need to do so that my child will be uh, tall and, you know, intelligent, right? And what are the right nutrients that she needs, okay? And those are very important because, and those are needed at the right time because child's brain is developing so fast and at every stage, child requires different micronutrients. So it is important and we'll talk about it, uh, what is required, okay? So the right nutrition during this period, it means the difference between a life of productivity or struggle and between life and death. I mean, you know, we work in tribal areas, we work in slum, uh, slums, and most of the time you will see that SAM children, you must be knowing SAM, severe good malnourished children, those are mainly under one year of age, under two years of age, mainly under one year of age, and even predominantly they are less than six months of age. So if you don't have proper uh, nutrition during first thousand days, that that's basically that, you know, that's... You, you're taking away life from the child, literally, okay? And at that child, if suppose child is survived, and if child grows up, but the but the body is so stunted, and with that body, the child's brain is stunted. So basically, that child will struggle for the whole life to survive, okay? Just not life and death in the beginning, but if child survives, basically, they will have a, you know, a child will have a very poor productivity, not only in school, but even when he grows up. So it's important that uh, we, 
think of not only surviving the child, but also giving him good life. <clears throat> so what does it decide? It decides how healthy the child will be. So less infection, better immunity, reduce risk of uh, chronic condition like diabetes and blood pressure. How brainy the child will be. What do you mean by brainy? So brainy means you have good cognition, means intelligence, your memory. So child has a sharp memory. We all want, right? We, like, believe me, all, all your mothers must be asking you, what grades did you get? How many marks did you get? Did you get come? Did you come first? Did you come second? And for that, for everything to learn, not only you need intelligence, but what else do you need? You need memory, right? So this is important that why some children in a class, they remember everything and some children, they just don't remember anything. So that's important to have a good memory. Concentration. If you can't concentrate, that means you will not be able to do well. You know, so it's very important that child have a good concentration. Judgment, judgment, judgment. We all know what is judgment. Whether something a child is doing, taking decision, whether it's you know taking taking good judgmental call. Those are very important. <clears throat> Mood is important. Sometimes you find the children are very moody. They're upset, they're all the time irritable. So your mood also depends upon how child was brought up in the first thousand days, okay? And then lastly, your skeletal growth, how tall the child will be. So these are the three important aspects that uh, we need to take care of when child is growing in first thousand days. So let's talk about brain. Brain is my favorite topic. So I'm gonna talk about brain a little bit and see how, how we can make this child uh, intelligent, okay? So, yeah, I'm sure you guys know about neural tube. This is basically a tube here. This is a picture. So this is your neural tube. Okay. So uh, at around three weeks of age, your uh, body starts developing in the form of neural tube. So this is a tube. Okay. Now here, this part is basically is going to develop into brain. And this part is going to develop into your spinal cord. Okay. So here, then what happens during this time, Suppose if you don't have enough uh, nutrients which are required for this neural uh, growth, you will have problems. So what are the micronutrients which are required for development of this neural tube? One is your folic acid. I think everybody knows about folic acid. But what we don't know, there are two, three other micronutrients which are required for a neural tube uh, defect, I mean, neural tube uh, development. One is your vitamin B12. And second is your choline. So you require just choline, uh, you know, your uh, vitamin B12 and folic acid. So we only talk about folic acid, but how about B12 and your, uh, and uh, I know that a lot of you are uh, uh, nutritionists and we know that B12 is hardly available any uh, vegetarian food. So what are you going to tell mother who is not even having milk? Like for example, a lot of these tribal mothers, they don't drink milk. They don't have access to milk. So how will she get B12? Right, so we have to think of what all nutrients that she or what all food that you can give them. So they'll have initially, I mean, this is three weeks, so she doesn't even know that she's pregnant, right? So you need to start this nutrients not when she's pregnant, but when she is when she gets married or when she's planning a child, that's when you need to start food which is high in all these nutrients. I'll talk about choline later. And when you don't have this most three important micronutrients for neural tube, what will happen? This tube will not develop well. So do you see these tubes? These are not basically, you will see the gap in there. Okay, so this is all the gap and this is called neural tube defect. This is a tube, neural tube. This is a neural tube defects. Okay, so then what happens when you have a neural tube defect, say, posteriorly, like towards the lower part, right? Then you will have a little bit of spinal cord coming out. Okay, because the, because the spinal canal is not developed well, right? So then what happens is that basically you will see some amount of spinal cord here. Now, many times what happens, you may not have such a big bump over here, but you may just have a little bit of hole, tiny, tiny hole over here, okay? So what does pediatrician we have to do? We always have to examine when the baby is born, when the child has little hole, and if child has a hole, that means it's called basically spina bifida, and we have to get the MRI done. And that particular hole, if if it if it is worse, then child has paralysis for the whole life. Okay, they have problem with the uh, urination. They you know we have they have to go through surgery. So imagine folic acid and choline and B twelve is so important. Okay, and if child has hole in the front part, you know uh, right where the brain is, then this is called an encephaly. Okay, we nowadays we don't see it much, uh, but you know they do have uh, when they're born. Obviously, they they don't survive. 
So this is all basically totally, you know, you can prevent all this condition. And that's why folic acid is uh, been done compulsory. OK, now uh, this is basically anatomy of brain. Now I'm going to go a little bit in detail that what happens uh, in child's brain when the brain is developing. OK, so this are basically different parts of your brain. This is the frontal cortex, frontal part, front of your brain. This is the back part. OK, this is your side part, parietal. This is your uh, occipital lobe, temporal lobe. This all different kind of lobes, right? This is a cross section. This is a cross section, right? This is a front part. This is a back part. So here, if you look at it over here, so this is, again, you know, uh, your prefrontal cortex, right? Your primary motor cortex. This is all the different parts of your brain. OK, now if you look at the function of brain, so here is your front part of your brain. OK, so do you see over here? This is this particular frontal part. It is uh, involved in motivation and executive function. Motivation. If you don't have motivation to do anything, you can't, you know, you can't succeed, right? So it's very important that this this part of brain is developed well because it is a, it it functions for execution and for motivation. Okay. Now a little bit about the anterior cingular cortex over here. This part over here, that is involved in your social interaction, uh, affection, attention. So look at this. This part is also so important because that will help with the attention, right? Do you see over this red part over here? It's called amygdala. Amygdala is important for stress and for learning. So a lot of time what happens is, you know, uh, lots of children, they get a lot of anxiety, stress, you know, uh, or they have learning problem. That is because of problem with amygdala. And this is your hippocampus. Hippocampus, remember, is for learning and memory. If you want good memory, you make sure that anything which is required to develop this hippocampus, you work on that and, you know, child will have good memory. Okay, so this are this are your develop uh, your basically brain development. So at fourth, fourth week of pregnancy, the brain has about ten thousand cells. Okay, and by twenty fourth week, it contains about ten billion. So you can imagine in just matter of twenty weeks, look at the number of cells being developed. Right. So nutrition is absolutely important, but there are so many other things which are important. Okay. This is your neurons. Do you see all these neurons? These are basically connection. So as brain is developing, neuron cells are developing. And do you see this, this layer of uh, you know myelin sheet? This is called myelin sheet. Now, myelin sheet is your fat. It's made up of fat. So when you have a good myelin, strong myelin sheet, what happens? The, the uh, message passing through is very fast. The message, the signal, neural signals, those are very rapid signals, right? So you want you make you want to make sure that when mother is pregnant, that she gets good amount of fat, okay? Because baby's brain is made up of fat. This is all basically it's it's all fatty sheet, right? And uh, most important, uh, uh, you know, uh, cholesterol is important. Saturated fat is really important. Uh, this is your what is this neurotransmitters? Remember your synapses. These are synaptic junctions, and there are your neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are also really, really important, basically, to pass on the signal, right? So you want to make sure that you have to learn that which are these nutrients which are important for uh, formation of neurotransmitter. One of the neurotransmitters is acetylcholine. If you remember acetylcholine, now choline, remember choline I spoke about? So we need to know what, why, how do this mother get choline so that she, a baby gets beautiful amount of neurotransmitters. OK, now this is another beautiful graph. What uh, what we have shown over here, this is basically, uh, you know, from conception from nine months to birth. OK, this is your first two years of life. So from this are first thousand days in this green box is first thousand days. Then you, here is your child growing up, becoming adult. And this is your 70 years of so that's your basically you know your lifespan right so you here at around say eight months of age i mean uh, after one month of pregnancy your child develop neurulation here that that means that child is developing neural tube okay once a neural tube is developed here uh, for next few months they it causes cell migration means different parts of the brain are being formed frontal lobe occipital lobe right and then just before two months of birth child start developing 
myelination. Myelination means, you know, you saw those neurons, right? So it start developing that, uh, uh, you know, myelin sheet around uh, those neuronal cells. So if you look at, at around uh, zero month at birth, you know, some of the myelination has already started. Do you see all this? There are some amount of myelination already started, but then it starts picking up. So if you look at birth over here, the, the, the green color graph over here, you know, so that is mainly your so when you when the baby is born what does baby do right baby can see baby can hear right so those parts of your brain is getting myelinated you're seeing hearing so visual cortex is for seeing and auditory cortex is for hearing okay so those parts of your brain start getting myelination right then if you look at your orange graph this peaks at around eight to nine months of age. Do you see around nine months of age? So what happens at nine months of age? Do you remember what happens uh, in the child? They start developing language. So they start speaking a word or two. So there is a receptive language. They can understand what you're saying, okay? And they can also start producing speech. They'll say mama, dada, they'll say a word. So at around nine months of age, that area get myelinated, you know? These are the areas of brain, okay? And this one, the last line, the red line, that is yet around 12 months to one year of age and that is your higher cognition so by one year of age two years of age children have good amount of high, higher cognition function you know they can understand what you're saying they can respond you know they become extremely smart so do you see what this this is the most important part and after two years of age you can see myelination going down but it is very important that child continues to have good nutrition. Otherwise, what will happen if, if we get myelination problem, we will have a cognition issue. I mean, so we will forget, we will have a forgetting, our memory will get worse. So it's important that we take care of our myelination. Okay. So this two, two, as you as you could see, thousand days are extremely important for brain development. Okay. Now, what are the other external factors which affects, as I told you, nutrition is good, but, but because it's, uh, you know, a lot of these neural cells are developing, you want to make sure that there is reduction of toxic stress in mothers. Okay. So tomorrow, if you want to, if you're planning to become, uh, you know, when you get married and plan to become pregnant, you make sure that you don't have uh, a stress, you know, uh, you don't have any inflammation in the body. So you want to make sure that, you know, you don't have any diseases, Okay, uh, no, pre uh, and of course, presence of strong social support and secure attachment, very important, okay? So just make sure those are, uh, med physical uh, health is absolutely important, but your mental health is also important and provision of optimal nutrition, okay? Now, these are some of the nutrients which are required for brain development, okay? So I'm gonna go quickly because I'll, I'll come back to it, but mainly look at it, this is vitamin B6, what happens when you don't have vitamin B6? Uh, in fact, those are important for brain development function. Those are important for neurotransmitters. You know, we talked about uh, acetylcholine, but also, you know, your serotonin and so many other neurotransmitters. Okay, they, uh, norepinephrine, uh, which also influences mood. And if you don't have B6, there will uh, there are chances the child can have difficulty concentrating. Okay, then B12, as I talked about B12, right, neural tube defect, okay then poor cognition uh, if child doesn't have b12 uh, when baby is growing in the womb you know they will have poor cognition in younger children in fact what we find is we find uh, children have tremors children can have lifelong uh, problem neurological problem so it's important that you know we always uh, think of vitamin b12 because this is quite deficient in the vegan children okay mothers who are vegan choline i spoke about if you want your child to have a lifelong good memory and learning function make sure the child gets uh, mothers get enough choline okay copper is Im important folate we talked about folate is important uh, we also talked about iodine i think iodine is important because uh, iodine can prevent uh, mental retardation uh, you know, long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. So mainly I'm talking about uh, DHA and EPA, okay. Uh, ALA can get converted to DHA, which I'll come back later, but uh, it's uh, the, you know, uh, it's probably a 4% to maximum 10% get, uh, you know, converted. So if it is, if mother is non veg please offer her fatty fish, okay. That, that will really help child to become really, look at this, uh, if you don't have uh, enough DHA, then there is poor attention, hyperactivity, problem learning, right? So DHA P is extremely important. Protein is important, selenium, zinc, right? Why zinc? 
look at this. Remember hippocampus I talked about? Memory. You want your child to have good memory. Your zinc is really important. Okay. Vitamin K, we give it at birth. That it's compulsory. It, we give it all over the world because children don't have enough vitamin K. So we give in, injection at birth. Okay, and iron is, I mean, the iron is one topic that we can talk about for, for hours, really. It's so important, you know, it impacts myelination of nerves, okay? And uh, we have also found there are a lot of studies which uh, says that the children have, if they don't have enough iron, uh, it does affect their mental health, you know, so they have high level anxiety and depression later in life. So it's important that, you know, we take care of uh, food which is high in iron. Okay, now this is some of the studies that I wanted to talk about. So one of the study is uh, uh, what is the influence of prenatal and postnatal growth on intellectual functioning? Because we all want our children to be intelligent, right? So what they found, actually I love the study, really. So what they found that when child had beautiful linear growth, linear means tall, right? So when, when the child was growing quite tall in first year of age, before, not after, before 12 months of age, and the weight. So this was the uh, this was the length part before 12, and the weight of the child before four months of age. If child was growing beautifully in first four months weight wise and height up to 12 months of age, those children had a higher IQ at nine years of age. Okay, so you you can imagine many times, you know, mother said, oh, my child is not gaining weight. My child is not gaining weight. And if we don't do anything right away, then if you miss those first three months of, uh, you know, weight gain where, you know, children do grow tremendously, you know, when you look at a WHO growth chart and because they don't grow well, you know, their height will also not grow well. Those are the children who will have poor IQ. Right. So many times mother said, oh, my child is not doing good in math. My child is not doing because they must not have gained good amount of weight, not only during womb, not only during pregnancy, but also in first few months of life. So this is this is a really good study that, you know, uh, we read all the time in pediatrics. OK. And uh, also another thing is your IOGR. So, you know, a lot of time, I mean, in India, we see a lot of low birth weight babies. Right. So here what they found that children who were born small for gestational age small for gestational age means you know for that term or preterm baby that weight was not enough okay for whatever gestational age baby was born so here if the baby was born say at around 30 35 weeks of gestation 35 week uh, is basically your premature baby or later they scored lower score on your neurodevelopmental assessment means they did not do well uh, neurodevelopmentally okay so it is important that basically you know children uh, grow very well in the womb during pregnancy okay uh, this is another very good study where there was a critical period of brain growth and cognitive function so this is uh, what they found is a brain growth during infancy early childhood is more important than growth during fetal life in determining cognitive function this means that even if child is born say small you know but ch if child has beautiful growth in first say uh, 12 months 18 months then that we can basically rescue the child OK, so even though, even you go in the field and you see children are born to 2.3 kg, 2.4 kg. But, you know, you focus on the breastfeeding skill, you focus on the complementary feet and children do beautifully. So this was another very good study which was done. Uh, now, timing of growth faltering is very, very important, OK, because what we found, this is one study which was done. They basically took 700,000 children, OK, from zero to six years of age. And, and they took it. They took this data from 57 different countries. Look at this huge study and very recent 2018. Right. And what they found that basically most linear growth faltering, linear growth means height and the wasting which is your acute malnutrition it takes place prior to 23 months of age means most of your malnutrition undernutrition takes place under under in 1000 days okay so here is the growth uh, here is a chart that they uh, shown in their publication so here this is your boys so these are your boys okay this is your mean zero is mean most of the 50% children should be over here okay but here as you see this is your zero month six months 12 months 18 months do you see how boys and this is your height for height okay your height for age so your z score so look at how children are growing going down in 18 months 
right these are boys and these are girls so girls are not so small to begin with but basically they fall right uh, boys fall definitely much more and then by by uh, 60 months pretty much they are pretty much equal right so girls have advantage in the beginning now this is your waist uh, weight for height means this is your sam man your acute malnutrition right so here this is your boys this is your this is your mean uh, zero okay so children are children overall in 57 different countries children are not bad to begin with but look at this how badly they fall right and then they come up so everything whenever you see it, this growth faltering occurs in first 24 months and generally wasting occurs much early on that means children not gaining weight so in first year of age look at this in first year of age children are not growing well you know they are not putting on weight and eventually they become stunted also right so what happens to all these children who are not growing well they poor nutrition will lead to stunting they will become short okay so if you're thinking that uh, you know oh my god this child is so short and if you see them at three years of age four years of age the stunting is irreversible so it's irreversible if you don't tackle it within one year okay in my experience if child came to me after six months of age i could not do much about the stunting part really they, i had to bring those children up or a reversal of stunting i could do it just if they came before six months of age so that first six months is extremely important okay but as they were losing height they were also losing iq okay so there is a loss of iq which is which is very very detrimental to child's life right then what happens the stunting when you are stunted you will be stunted as an adult right and if you're a woman and if you're only five feet tall then you will be basically passing on the stunting you know, stunted girl child at two will give birth to a low birth weight baby so your risk of getting a low birth weight baby is very high okay if you're stunted okay so so you basically you're passing on that uh, you know yeah that i wouldn't call it gene but epigenetic expression to the child okay and then that stunted child has a very high risk of developing metabolic syndrome later on okay so you don't want the child to develop blood pressure diabetes so then you work on them in first thousand days and you know of course continue on the children will not develop metabolic syndrome okay and sometimes it takes about two to three generation to combat stunting so if suppose child is stunted mother is stunted grand grandmother is stunted so that girl child it may take maybe one or two generation for the child to become five eight five nine i'm talking about a girl child okay and uh, we have a uh, lot of cases now the children are really girls are very tall even in india okay and but that takes a two three generation of good nutrition okay so there is this uh, journalist uh, mr roger thuro he was in india and he did a lot of study you know on malnutrition his beautiful paper you guys must read it and he wrote a beautiful uh, uh, he he quoted this uh, he wrote that uh, if you want to improve the future to truly improve the world we have thousand days to do it mother by mother child by child for so what happens in those thousand days through pregnancy to second birthday it determines to a large extent the course of child's life, his her, her ability to grow, learn, work, succeed, and by extension, the long-term health, stability, and prosperity of society in which the child lives. Okay, so it's, if you want to improve the world, you can't leave a single child and single mother. Okay, if you want a beautiful world where no child is malnourished. You have to basically go and help each and every mother who comes to your door, okay? Or you have to go to her door. So I'm sure you uh, understood the importance of first thousand days and how if first thousand days are not taken care of, then child will go into stunting and, uh, you know, wasting and also underweight. So, um, and of course, brain development is so uh, important because it's very rapidly growing uh, during first thousand days and uh, also the physical growth, you know. So, uh, now we will start with uh, our tutorials. So, so, thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of the first thousand days of life. In this tutorial, we will discuss the benefits of good nutrition during these days. Also, we will learn how to nourish a baby during these days. 
Some key topics mentioned in this tutorial are explained in other tutorials. Please visit our website for more details. Let us first understand what are the first thousand days of life. The first thousand days of life start on the first day of pregnancy. They end on a child's second birthday. How well a child grows in these thousand days decides the future. If nourished well, the child can have a healthy future. Good nutrition is necessary for a child's early development. It plays a foundational role in enabling a child to grow, learn and succeed. Let's discuss the role of nutrition at every stage in the first thousand days. The first stage is pregnancy. The brain of the fetus begins to grow from the third week of pregnancy. Thereafter, it develops at a very high speed during the entire pregnancy. Most of the mothers are not even aware of their pregnancy during this time. Therefore, all women in their reproductive age should consume nutritious food. It is especially important for women planning a pregnancy. Healthy lifestyle, body fat and muscle percentage before pregnancy are crucial. Adolescent and pre-pregnancy nutrition is explained in other tutorials. Please visit our website for more details. During the third trimester, the brain cells begin to be covered by a layer of fat. It is called the myelin sheath. This helps in passing the messages through the brain cells quickly. By seventh month, brain of a fetus takes on a form that resembles an adult's brain. In the seventh, eighth and ninth months, there is a rapid growth of the fetus's brain. This rapid growth is not possible without one thing. It is the nutrition that a baby gets from the mother's diet. Mother's diet decides the baby's body fat and muscle percentage. It also decides the baby's food preferences. Mother should consume a variety of nutrient-dense local seasonal foods. Adequate amounts of iron, folate and calcium should be present in her body. Consumption of iodine sources is necessary during pregnancy. She must eat adequate protein, good fats and essential nutrients. Sources of these nutrients are given in other tutorials of the same series. Otherwise, vital brain development processes can be impaired. The baby could also have birth defects and cognitive defects. A well-known example is neural tube defects. Folate, B12 and choline are needed for early development of the brain and spine. Mother must take sufficient folate during pre-pregnancy. She should take it in the early weeks of pregnancy as well. Otherwise, the development of the neural tube can go wrong. It leads to birth defects of the brain and spine. The rate of a mother's weight gain during pregnancy decides the baby's health. High weight gain in mothers who are not underweight is not good. It increases the risk of childhood obesity. Obesity during pregnancy puts women at risk for gestational diabetes. This increases the baby's risk to be obese and diabetic later in life. A mother's lifestyle during pregnancy also plays an important role. Severe stress 
depression or violence during pregnancy must be avoided. Such negative experiences can deeply affect a developing fetus. Smoking can cause low birth weight or premature delivery. It can also increase the baby's risk of obesity later in life. Alcohol and tobacco should not be consumed. Diseases should be prevented or treated immediately to minimize nutrient loss. After the 270 days of pregnancy, infancy is the second stage of the first thousand days. During infancy, the child's brain develops motor functions such as balance. It also develops the ability to create new memories and remember them later. At this stage, proper newborn care is required. Newborn care is explained in detail in other tutorials in the same series. Breast milk is the best food for a newborn's brain development. It contains a variety of nutrients, growth factors and hormones. It is made up of unique components for each mother and her baby. No formula milk available in the market can be the same as mother's milk. Its impact on brain development is incomparable. Mother's milk has a high level of DHA and EPA. They are important for brain development of the baby. Exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months has many benefits. Breastfeeding is associated with an increase in IQ. It is also associated with getting more education and earning a better income. This is true for children and adolescents across all income levels. This brain development is not just because of breast milk. The experience of breastfeeding also contributes to it. Breastfeeding involves plenty of mother-child interaction and nurturing. It helps in strengthening a baby's sensory and emotional control. These are critical for both cognitive and socio-emotional development. To get these benefits, breastfeeding must be done using the proper technique. Next, let's discuss brain development in the toddler stage. A child's brain continues to grow and develop at a rapid pace. During toddlerhood, a child's brain develops the ability to do complex tasks. A toddler's brain is busy forming new connections between the brain cells. At this time, such connections are created faster than at any other time in life. This has many benefits. It helps the child to learn new things faster. It also helps the child to adapt to changing environments and circumstances. In the second year of baby's life, parts of the brain's language areas develop. This leads to a sharp increase in a child's language abilities. It also develops language learning capacity and the ability to learn new skills. Nutrition during this period remains critically important. Protein, iron, zinc and iodine are essential to the toddler's developing brain. Other important nutrients are DHA, EPA, choline, B12, etc. Iron plays a significant role in brain development throughout the first thousand days. Damage caused due to iron deficiency 
in these thousand days can be irreversible. It leads to impaired learning and socio-emotional behavior. This includes less social interaction and alertness, increased irritability, increased cautiousness, less interest in indoor and outdoor games. This can reduce the amount of attention and interaction given by caregivers. This further contributes to the poor development of the child. Iron deficiency also appears to affect the chemical substances in the brain. It is associated with higher levels of anxiety and depression later in life. It impacts consequent job potential. Toddlers need to be fed iron-rich foods. Otherwise, they are unlikely to consume enough iron. Hence, after 6 months of age, complementary feeding is necessary. Damage caused by malnutrition in the first thousand days is permanent. It causes loss of IQ. Chronic malnutrition during this critical period leads to stunting. Loss of height or stunting in the first two years of life cannot be reversed. It affects the child's future generations too. Malnourished women give birth to malnourished sons and daughters. Later on, these malnourished daughters grow up to become malnourished mothers. Therefore, they create a continuous cycle of malnourishment. It takes two to three generations to combat stunting in future generations. This is why the average height of a 19-year-old woman in India is only 5 feet. The average height of a 19-year-old man in India is only 5 feet 4 inches. All this can be prevented by improving nutrition during first thousand days. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining.